In this vlog, I just want to quickly remark about the Google artificial intelligence, the Google AI built into Android at least. I find that it's getting more and more sophisticated. It's kind of interesting. What I noticed over the last few weeks is how now the Google's AI is now reading the emails and suggesting responses to the emails and sometimes some pretty complex responses. For example, the Google AI is trying to figure out whether or not there is a tech support question being thrown at me. And then it will suggest a few different generic answers related to tech support, that sort of stuff. It will recognize when there might be a scheduled meetings. It will give me options there as well. It's getting pretty, pretty uh, interesting. And I can just imagine what a few years will do in terms of uh, AI's capacity to start taking over more and more tasks as it's able to analyze inputs and generate relevant outputs. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. AI, uh, machine learning, all this kind of stuff. It is definitely a growing field and something to get into. Uh, yes, indeed. That's where Python would come in, of course. Anyhow, I just wanted to make mention of that. I found it kind of interesting. When something piques my curiosity like this, I figure it might be a good vlogging topic. You've probably heard of the law of diminishing returns. Well, maybe you haven't. The law of diminishing returns tells us that at some point, the amount of effort or money that you invest in something will have a diminished return, meaning you won't see too much of a difference. So for instance, the difference between a $80,000 sports car and a quarter million dollar sports car from what I've seen, is not a huge difference, if, if much of at all. It could be 10% different, maybe, you know, it's not that difficult, it's not, uh, it's not so obvious to me. Same thing with computers, you know, between the uh, super high-end computers in terms of speed and processing power versus the middle of the road, though the super high-end computer is much more expensive, you may get an extra 15% performance increase, maybe 20 if you're lucky, when you spend all that extra money on the high-end computer. Now, what's come to my attention recently, and I suspected it, is the same thing with cameras. So I'm using a middle-of-the-road prosumer, I guess, Canon 80D. So in the US, it's about what the kit lens is about, I guess around 1500 bucks for this camera. So it's really middle-of-the-road. And it does uh, what I need it to do. So I was comparing footage from my middle of the road camera with uh, middle of the road lenses versus these $10,000 Canon cameras. Now, there is a difference, there's no question about it, but man, it's not huge. In my, to my eye, it's maybe 10, 15% better in my eye. What you're getting with these very expensive cameras is a lot more flexibility, perhaps. Now, since I'm just doing this type of vlog style or in my office, in my living room types of shooting, I don't really need the super expensive camera. So let me give you an idea. So I'm using on this camera a low end, well low end, a middle of the road, no it's not low end, a 24 millimeter lens from Canon and it's a super thin lens like this thick and it shoots at 2.8. If you don't know anything about camera, that's the size of the hole in the in the lens. The bigger the hole, the more light. The bigger the hole, the more expensive the lens. It's just the way it is. Um, yeah, so the lens is the most important part of the camera in terms of the quality of the picture, right? Because everything goes through that glass in the lens. But anyhow, so I got this lens, and up here in Canada, it's about $220 lens. And it is a $220 lens at 24 millimeter, 2.8. So 2.8 is the size of the hole. So this lens here, let me uh, show you. So that lens here is a another Canon lens. And it too is a 2.8, 24 millimeter. Now it has one extra capability, it has image stabilization. So if you shake it around, it removes some of the shakes. But beyond that, and I've tested it extensively versus the lens I have on now, this lens pretty much has the same quality image in my, it's from my, from, 
from what I can tell. Now, this lens though has the image stabilization, so it's stable. The one on the camera doesn't, but who cares? You only need image stabilization if you're doing this, you have it handheld, right? And you can have jitters. But uh, on this lens, since I just have it on my tripod, it doesn't matter to me. This lens though, when it focuses, you hear makes noise. And the lens I have on the camera right now, because it's a newer lens, doesn't make any noise. This lens is $700 on sale. The lens I have on the camera is $200 on sale. 700 versus 200. And depending on what you're looking for, these lenses don't really have clear advantages over the other. So here is the example of the law of diminishing returns. So it cost you an extra seven, well not extra seven, the extra $500, more than triple the price to get this lens here which for all intents and purposes is pretty much like this lens in terms of the picture quality, except this, this lens here has IS on there, image stabilization. Anyhow, I just thought I'd throw that out there as food for thought. Consider the law of diminishing returns whenever you are approaching anything. Ciao, ciao.